Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jana Patriarca, and I'm uh, an author with uh, INANA Publications. And my new book, uh, To the Men Who Write Goodbye Letters, uh, will be launched on the 12th of this uh, month. It's been a hard year for uh, publishing houses, for authors, and for anyone in the arts. So it's um, wonderful if you're out there and you're supporting us and you're, uh, you know, buying our books. Very important. Keep the voices alive. Uh, to the men who write goodbye letters, people are kind of uh, intrigued by the title. It's uh, pretty much exactly what it says, and, but the goodbye letters are often for many different reasons, and it isn't always the breakup of a romance, but uh, there are many ways to write goodbye letters for many reasons. So it's a book um, that has a lot of loss in it, but um, also a lot of hope. And I'm just going to read a couple of poems to give you a little bit of an idea of what uh, is in here. So you may be interested in picking it up. Uh, I'll read the very first poem, which is titled, Die, so I can write about it. I don't recall who wrote the line, some poet, an important one perhaps. I forget a lot of things lately, makes it easier now to forgive. You left for a good reason, I think, I hope. Maybe you needed a first kill to write. Was I too loud, too fat, awkward? my voice too clear, it frightened you. You needed to be the clever one, creative, ingenious, living your happiness as a myth, a parable. Was I too foreign? You wanted a piece of me to complete your heart, but I hadn't been murdered yet. You danced me to the stairwell. I lacked grace, stumbled. Was it your hand that pushed me, that held me down, sunlight on a tired body, a vacancy, light enough to dispose? We wander backwards towards our sins, surveying, find only the grief, the guilt in all the hollow spaces. The next poem, um, is, um, I guess, the title poem um, to the men who write goodbye letters. Might as well read that one, right? Because the title tells the story. Oh, look at all these little funny things that I don't know <laughs> how to use yet. <laughs> to the men who write goodbye letters. Only fucked up romantics write letters that become poems. You were young. Your heart was too large to accept anything less than grace, anything less than light. You crumbled. I'm old now. You would not know me. I don't write letters. I organize. I sanitize. I live in a clean house. My heart is overweight with secrets and silence. I wish you had written that letter to me back then. I might have convinced you exiting was the wrong thing to do. I might have talked you into hanging around so you too could have watched the end of grace, the end of light. But you wanted to leave when you were still beautiful, didn't you? And uh, the last poem is a little bit longer. It's a sort of a... Um, a prose poem that I was um, trying to write, more of a story poem, and um, it's called In That Back Room, and um, I'll end with this one. In That Back Room. In that back room, three flights up, with the rusted hot plate, the burnt espresso pot, the two unsteady chairs, you wrote the letter. All the bottles you had emptied, a glass courtyard for roaches, fat mice drunk on your leftovers kept you company. 
There among the ghosts you inherited, the ones you invited to share your bed, all the poetry that kept you sane or not, you picked up the pen. There where the days were nights, the nights were days, you bled each drop a leaky faucet and she watched it stain everything. Did you find time to fill all the notebooks with brilliant words, scribble the beginnings of song lyrics, document the great poems beneath that quarantine, stars of that island? You escaped to become the god of your heart, breathing in your charm and solid f flesh. <laughs> You were anointed, you conceded. But the Greek sky sometimes succumbs to violent rain and even the luckiest and most resilient can lose their amulet in the rush for cover. She came across an old white cotton shirt. Your face jumped inside her head. She finds it necessary to remember you now. She isn't sure whose shirt it is. It might have been yours, but you never made love in white cotton shirts. Those were reserved for the lovers you tortured her with. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's lonely, losing her hair, needs to empty the drawers of everything. She's moving to a smaller space, not a physical one, but one that will not keep her awake nights. Perhaps it resembles the space you moved into not long before you wrote that letter, when you had made up your mind. She's not sure. She will walk around it a while. She will fold that white shirt and leave it on the chair. She has unpacked the last box you inhabited, the one behind the unclaimed books that were never read. Try to unravel the two gold chains wrapped in the lace handkerchief one missing the metal, what to do with them. The photographs will make a glowing fire. She recalls the story you told her, how images on paper would haunt forever unless devoured in flames. Your mother burned funeral announcements of dead relatives in the backyard fire pit. All those cards of Christ, saints and Virgin Marys she set on fire after finding your note, their charcoal spirit swept away by the wind. It didn't help her. She knew you better than your mother did. You inherited all of the fears, your eternal communion with ancestors. She was simply there to clean up the mess. Um, thank you so much for listening to me. Sorry for the interruption, but you know, such is life. We never know when that bell's going to ring. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ainana and Luciana and Renee and everyone there. And uh, for all of you who love books, uh, thank you.